Wait, are we actually live? Yeah, we're live. <laughs> Hi, everybody! <laughs> Welcome back to Table Takes Game Night. I say game night, but uh, this is the final game night. This will be the last Table Takes Game Night, unfortunately. Thank you all for joining us for Table Takes Game Night for so long. We've been having such a blast. But get ready for Table Takes Plays! We're going to be playing even more RPGs, board games, and whatever else we find out there in the wild, wild west. When we come back from Gen Con, which is happening in six days! That's right, we have a revamped Table Takes Game Night. It's going to be called Table Takes Plays, and we can't wait to show it to you. We've been working on it for a really long time. We have so many cool things. I've been making a lot of really huge promises, and we're going to live up to every single last one of them, aren't we? Nah. Today, we're going to be playing another episode of Monster of the Week. Showdown at the Palace of Pain! When we left off, our intrepid hunters had been... Uh, camped out in the lower library belonging to none other than the illustrious expert, Anu. Anu took Opie there in order to investigate the strange happenings going on with Seth Vale and the prophecy and much, much more to do. Just as well, Gunther McHammer had recently been reprimanded by the Lords of the March, the Hunter's Guild, that since these adventurers, these hunters, out into the world to stop the evil Seth Vale. Gunther had been chastised for his use of blood magic and been given his final warning. Now, having collected the warning and successfully uh, once again mounted the giant hut with legs called the Baba Yaga Chicken Hut, Gunther summarily crashed through a wall <laughs> after directing the chicken hut to get them out of here, unquote. And now we uh, are in the middle of the night and our hunters are in two different places. We've split the party successfully. And now let's see what they're going to do. Let's start with you, Gunther. Hey, what's up? What do you like to do? You are currently inside the Baba Yaga Chicken Hut on Route Two, Fort Kira. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just riding and vibing with the Chicken Hut. Um, I think I'm gonna explain like, hey, you know, like well, maybe my instructions should be taken like literally. I'm letting you know full on. I'm gonna blame you. Um, uh, if I get in trouble for kicking the walls down, yes, respectfully. Master. Yes, master. Hey, you know, I never asked you. Do you? You know, you. I, I get that you eat secrets, but do you like? Uh, you like tenders? I'm gonna whip me up some tenders. We got all this meat that was left out of the refrigerator. I, uh, I Are I'm these the things that you sell out of my body? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We that's what we sell. Master, yeah. I do not like chicken tenders. I like secrets. Juicy, sweet secrets. And you see, actually, you, the, the chicken that stops running for a second and hops around from foot to foot and just starts to sing the uh, secret song. Secrets, secrets! Tell no one secrets, secrets hurt someone! <laughs> I, I, I respect that, but have you ever tried chicken tenders, though? I can't, Master. I don't have mouth. I can't eat anything. I mean, do you want a mouth? Like, I'm already in trouble for doing some illicit magic. I'm, I'm, I'm down to do some, uh, some, uh, gratuitous hocus pocus. Master, if you're, you if can you're give into... mouth? I don't know, but I'm down to find out. <laughs> oh, master! Oh, yes, I, I want them out, master. Please, All right. master. You keep heading to Fort Kira. I'm going to do some research on how to give a sentient Baba Yaga chicken hut a mouth. The chicken hut uh, kicks up a bunch of dirt, and you can see like the cartoonish like chicken feet uh, spin around in like a blurred motion as it zips across the landscape, heading towards Fort Kira once again. Now, where'd I put that book on mouth magic? Oh, not that one. 
Anu and Opie, yeah. you are currently in the lower library, and it is uh, just about 10 p.m. by the time you make it there. <laughs> All right. So this uh, is a grand library uh, owned yes. by Anu, the expert. This is a place where you can find all of your stored knowledge, the notes that you've taken over your adventures, anything you've collected from your adventures as well would be here. Do they have any books on mouth magic? Actually, I probably do have. Oh, if it's in oh, okay. this corner. But, but also, we were. Uh, I think we were researching if we could summon uh, Merwin with smaller bits of Merwin to somehow not need all of Merwin. Oh, that was a real thing. That wasn't a, a joke. Can we get thing. a partial was... Merwin? Just a partial Merwin, not the full Just one. Just a partial you want lots Merwin. Of tiny Is it Merwins? possible? I do like tiny okay. We want to make a Merwin army. Yes. So... You go into your lower library. <clears throat> you open up the massive double doors and you can see rows upon rows of massive bookshelves towering 20, 30, 40 feet into the air, into the sky, um, until the massive domed ceiling with a massive uh, glistening chandelier above it lighting the entire building. As you grab um, one of your rolling ladders and whisk yourself down the aisle. Anu, you peruse through the different sections, uh, pushing past the historical bibliographies, the biographies, the non-fiction section you find yourself in the t uh, in the Tomes of Magic section, where you can find all of the many different uh, books that have to do with the undead. You find yourself perusing lots of information about, oh, all number of evil, horrible magics. And you find yourself in possession of several books that you'll have to peruse over the course of the entire night. Once you've done that in the morning, you will be able to have an answer. Uh, okay, uh, I, I, I go ahead. Uh, Opie, uh, you've been here before. The uh, cafe, the coffee is uh, right over there. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then also you could look at all the books. Uh, uh, as well. Just, sugar, just right? That's uh yeah yeah thing. yeah lots of sugar more lots more sugar. like half a cup of sugar and then like a little bit of well, i mean that you know that kind of like defeats the purpose of having coffee right if it's all sugar half a cup of sugar please and okay. and you know yes oh uh, i also uh uh i also uh kept your little nook that you liked earlier oh my right over nook. there yes cool I don't really understand the books of magic, but I'm gonna start. I'm gonna pick up uh, that one that I was reading earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't I know. Like pictures. The glyphs are kind of cool looking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yes, uh, uh, don't worry about putting all back. Just uh, leave them where you're at, and I'll I'll order them correctly and, and such. And also, I have to remember if I had pets in this lore library. Yes, every lore library needs one pet that somehow is always staying alive. What's yours? Uh, it's an owl cat. Ooh. An owl cat. You see yes. a small-sized little cat um, hopping uh, along the ground and eventually lands uh, on the top of one of the bookshelves that you are grabbing a book from. And you can see its tiny little owl features, its giant wide eyes, and it actually turns its head around 180 degrees just to look back at you uh, 360, excuse me, uh, to look back at you once again with its tiny little beak mouth. And I will go ahead and give it, I had somehow in my pocket a chicken strip. Give it to the... the uh, yes. Last night. The owl cat's <laughs> favorite. It chomps it up, throws it up in the air, and gobbles it all in one gulp. Ah, uh, hello. Oh, wait, no, uh, I will say that its name is Beans. Hello, Beans. Beans hoos at you and uh, shakes its feathers, a couple of them coming loose as it bounds away. Hi, Beans. Hi, Beans. Beans is great. Beans. <laughs> beans uh, turns its head to look over at Opie, oh, it tilts its head a little bit. It leaps off of a high bookshelf and flaps its giant wings until it lands <sighs> and perches down on your fingers. Yes. 
give some chin rubs to Beans. All right, Beans. I'll set Beans loose. Bye, Zay. Uh, right. uh, I'm gonna go make you that coffee, and then uh, Opie's gonna go make some uh, coffee. Yeah, Anu is gonna go into like research mode. N- nothing. It's just whispering and muttering to themselves and looking and grabbing books randomly, making notes. Do you want me to roll more library? No, no, absolutely not. No. This is okay. your domain. You are a master, an expert, if you will, in this field. You can research anything as long as you have enough time to do so. You're like that man, like that. As you hunker down with a small lamp that you've lit, uh, lit the gas lamp, um, and hunched over, poured, o- pouring over these massive tomes, large parchment, and a quill and ink nearby to take notes as you go along, you grab a couple of bookmarks um, and uh, a giant magnifying glass that you pull down off of a crane to peer closely at any symbology that you need to get a closer look at. Um, almost absentmindedly, because you've just done it so many times, you um, put the... Uh, giant record uh, on the phonograph. You move the needle onto the record and it starts to play this just to get you in like the mood as you like hunker down and go into research mode uh, pouring over all of these different strange symbols, all of the large texts, just speed reading through everything, flipping, flipping, flipping faster than the human eye can actually catch, but you're a hunter. Uh, Opie, what are you up to? Uh, so Opie is gonna fix Anu that uh, cup of coffee with half sugar, uh, and sort of place it down. I think uh, Anu is too busy working to even notice that they dropped a, t- a cup of coffee off next to them. Um. Uh, and uh, Opie's gonna head back to a reading nook, and on the way is going to grab a book off of one of the shelves. Um, and uh, is picked up a book on astral projection. Uh, and is going to, I would like to flip to a page and try to, uh, I would like to try to use magic. Opie's not very good at this, but uh-huh. mostly I'm, I'm fishing so I can get a failure so that I can level up. Okay. I like this RPing. <laughs> so you're trying, uh, explain to me what you're doing to, uh, to get this to happen. So I'm, I'm looking, flipping through the pages, I'm going to find like this mm-hmm. glyph and it's like instructions. Okay, so we draw the glyph in the circle with chalk. Okay, chalk. Candles in the four cardinal directions. Got it. Now we sit in the center of the circle and we enter a deep meditative state. And if we astral project, we can communicate with people that we are bound to from miles away. Okay, so you sit down, and now that you've collected all of these things together, uh, I'm going to have you do two things. I'm going to have you act under pressure, and then okay. do a muse magic roll. Really? Act under pressure? Like, we're not mm-hmm. really... Yeah, in this okay. case, it's more because you don't have any experience in this field whatsoever. So it's sort okay. of like a barrier to entry to using magic. All right, cool. Also... You just knowing that things could go wrong is enough for any unpracticed magic user to succumb to uh, the pressure. Cool, cool. That was a twelve. <laughs> okay, excellent, good job. Um, what you wanted to happen happens. You managed to keep your calm and cool. You are going to be able to do the use magic roll with no penalties. Here, go ahead and see if you can. Uh, <laughs> Do whatever right, it is you're a, trying to I do. I got a minus two in this. Let's go, baby. Go for it. That's an 11, though. X. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. Great. Yeah. So uh, n- n- without a hitch, you managed to uh, use magic. So uh, let me get this straight. You were trying to... Um, I'm trying to look- contact Gunther. Contact Gunther. Gunther, you I hear- want to astral project a Gunther. Uh, Gunther, you hear um, an unfamiliar sound. Uh, other people have heard this before, but you've seen other people engaged with this sort of magic before. Mm-hmm. But uh, nobody like that is around, so you're not really sure what's going on. Ring! 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 Uh, phone sound is like ringing nearby. 
what is going on? I just started really getting into this mouth magic. All right. Um. Yes. <laughs> what? It sounds uh -huh. like it sounds like one of your magic materials from the other room is actually making this noise. If, if somebody's trying to actually contact you, it all clicks for after a moment of thought. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna go to it, pick it up, and go, huh? <laughs> so you have a plethora of different magic items, consumables, and things like that that you typically use. What would this be? This is a stone. That is carved with Gunther's personal room. Um, That's awesome. Uh, it, 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 it functions more like uh, a scrying device. Mm. So he uses it to see out when he doesn't want to use the third eye. So Somebody's managed to use it to actually scry to you in a two-way call. I don't like that. Who, what? Huh? Who is this? Uh... Where did you get this room? Ahoy, hoy! Hey, Gunther. Opie? You okay? An image of Opie actually appears from ah! the device. And as you move it around, it, 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 Opie moves with you. Okay. Um, are you doing magic? Yeah. Um, uh. Like, can I have nothing? Like. No, like, I, I just. <laughs> I wanted to, I needed to contact you because we didn't know where you were, and like, this was the only way that I knew how. We went to Honor's Library, and... So you uh, just so... did a scry spell on a flute. Like, you're the chosen one now, you're also the caster? The Listen, group? I'm like... just as surprised as you are. I did not expect this to work. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. Because like, I, mean, I, I, I would have I would have expected it for, for, to work if I did it. Listen, I I did I I copied like the runes exactly, and I was really worried that I messed something up with the material. Have you been looking over my shoulder while I've been doing my rune work? Of course, I always look over your shoulder while you do the That's rune work. Kind of creepy. All right, um, uh, what, what what do you need? Uh, well, um, where are you, my guy? Oh yeah, I that's probably important. Um, so yeah, right. I I tell I did my my ice wing thing right uh, -huh. uh to go to the chicken hut yeah uh, and jokes on me uh seth took the chicken hut and i think we were in like a volcano area and the chicken hut was hanging over the volcano and uh seth was talking it like he's a dick he's, up. yeah he's a dick but he's kind of cordial he's all like ah, evil plan and i'm like ah, i don't like that he was like too bad i was like uh, for you and then you know of course i was a baller as usual um so how i escaped hut? oh how like well see that's the th okay um how did he how did seth well, how, chicken hut i didn't ask questions it seemed kind of rude at the time it wasn't really important all the meat stalled so we've got to really rework the inventory we gotta as work well. the sale yeah okay. I, well i don't even know if it's gonna last long enough for a sale um, Listen, I'm I, working right now to see if I can conjure up a mouth for the chicken hut to, to feed him the chicken uh, instead well, of secrets. I mean, oh, right. That's how you got the, that's how you got the chicken hut. Uh, this son of a gun, um, went all turncoat because, uh, Seth gave him some really good secrets, which we are going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to figure out the secrets that Seth told him. Cool. Uh, so are you gonna get secrets? So Seth gave him secrets. Are you can yeah. get secrets. All right. Uh, but you're on your way to us. Yeah. yeah how did you get out? Well, uh, volcano, lava. Why aren't you dead? Because I'm. Because I'm me. Oh, uh, but uh, that's impressive. I mean, yeah. Uh, I might have. I might have used a pinch of blood magic, which oh, okay. I. I don't want to hear it. All right, it was. Okay. Even, I could have got me. out. I could have got out, but that would have cost us the chicken hut, and that's the whole center of our brand. So yeah, I mean, let's have a safe brand. There's no Baba Yaga chicken hut without, without a Baba Yaga hut. chicken hut, right? So, um, came through corporate decision. Had to make it on my own. A little bit of blood magic. Uh, uh, the council of the, listen. The, I won't argue with your results. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. Just be considerate. Um, the the Hunters Council, uh, they kind of interfered with my teleport, which one did not know they could do that. 
it was a little scared. Not scared, but perturbed. Um, they let me know in no uncertain terms that I'm not allowed to do that kind of stuff again. So, oh. um, yeah. Listen, I, I'm not going to give shit for it. Uh, yep. So, uh, we're at Anu's library. We aren't really at Fort Kira. Uh, we're a little bit past that. Oh! We got to make a deep... We got to change destinations. Well, I mean, we're it's just past it. It's not very far. Well, I, I told, it, listen, it's been a hard day for me and the chicken hut. We've been through yeah. a lot right now. Well, I mean, cook up if you can cook up some chicken. Anu's pulling an all nighter to try and get Merwin back, and uh, uh, we we might have a plan. Oh, ask Anu if Anu knows anything about mouth magic. Mouth magic? I think there's probably some books here on that. I might have passed by a stack. Make sure it's the right kind of mouth you know? Right? So you don't want to make that mistake. <laughs> you know, that won't I mean, be you useful. Hey. That won't be useful. <laughs> uh, but seriously, though, um, we'll be on our way. Uh, is there anything else that I'm forgetting? Oh, right. Um, I got some information on Seth's little hideout. There's a big red button. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, I think I think bad things happen if that gets pressed. So yeah, I have an idea about that. Oh, work? What happened? Uh, I got one of those. You know how sometimes I get like those creepy visions when I stare too deep into the fryer oil. Oh, well, how'd you do without the fryer oil? I thought that was your whole thing. Uh, I mean, I was just kind of passed out in the hospital bed for a little bit, and I, it was kind of like a dream state. It was okay. Well, that Anyways, happens. uh, Seth's gonna try and take my powers. It's not gonna be cool. Oh, That's kind of why I need to talk to Merwin. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. So, um, in that case, we're on our way. Uh, we'll press the big red button when we get to it. Make sure you ask Anu about the mouth magic. Oh, we'll do. Also, I've been trying to resurrect, um, Merwin over here, but I can't do it by myself. Yeah, so, we need to put him on the ground, and we need to uh, at uh, sunrise. I was trying to find a shortcut. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's what Anu's kind of researching. So, two birds, one stone. Well, if Anu handles studying. Mouth magic. I kind of want to study uh, to see if I could do. Look, I tried ice magic, but he was in a volcano. Made it real hard. So, like, maybe that's if why I could... you had to. That's the hence the refrigeration problem. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I had gotcha. to toss everything out of the refrigerator and get in there, get a little bit cold. If I, I might be, I, if I could just learn some basic fire magic, maybe we'll be okay. But okay. I like, I don't know if I have the time to study mouth magic and fire magic. No, so. Gotcha, gotcha. All, All right, right, I'll uh, I'll talk to Anu, and I'll cool. uh, talk to you later. All right, I don't know how to I don't know how to end this. Uh, me neither, just... So we'll just stare at each other awkwardly for like. I'm just gonna th put the rock on the ground and see if that does it. All right, I'm I'm concentrating real hard. All right, and I'm <laughs> the rock on the ground. The connection <laughs> drops uh, with a. <laughs> As the sparks of magic go flying uh, and, and disappear into the wood of the floor. So good. Uh, I'm not going to be able to stop saying mouth magic. <laughs> mouth magic. I hope you're ready. Uh, if, you, if you look back I hope you're at, ready, uh, Noir. What, uh, what you are doing, what you've done, I hope you're ready. Oh boy. I hope uh, this is what you want. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. weird or creepy. I'll start with the design. <laughs> Mouth magic. All right. Uh, which, uh... You uh, redirect the Babia Chicken Hut and you instead head for the Lore Library, which yeah. is located in a town not far from Valley 14, known as... Hold on. Let me actually move you in roll 20. Winter Bay! Ooh, look at that. There are many locations in Winter Bay that you are quite aware of. There's the tea house, the tavern, the men's barracks, the temple, and the crypt. Uh, just as well, there is a tiny house in the lower western district that... Well, it's pretty unassuming at first glance, but when you head inside, it is much larger inside than it is from without. Sort of a pocket dimension 
sort of deal. You ever seen Doctor Who? That kind of thing. Um, you had for Winter Bay, but on, uh, until then, it appears Opie and Anu. Um, Anu, I'm assuming you're just going to be continuing to do some more research for the night. Yes. Uh, I'm going to be crunching on my coffee. How I like it. That's why I have so much sugar. It's, uh, it's a crunch crunching. Coffee. Crunching on your coffee. Got it. Crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. I don't drink coffee, so I have to assume that that's what it's like when you drink coffee. You just... It's with a half it. cup of sugar. Yes, it's it's crunchy coffee. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's that, that's perfectly normal. Um, Opie, what about you? You uh, heading to bed or? I think yeah, I'm gonna try and rest and get rid of some of this uh, some of this extra harm that I've got kicking off me. Noir, uh, Gunther, you arrive at Winter Bay at about we'll say around two in the morning. It takes about four hours to get there from where you were before. Um, you bring the chicken hut into Winter Bay. Uh, people kind of don't appear to have that same sort of just like strangeness about them uh, when it comes to you know, giant objects on walking, you know, on, on two massive legs bigger than them. A building with feet doesn't disturb them too much. You head right in to Winter Bay through the busy roads that are now quiet and barren. Uh, into the lower western district at Anu's um, secret hideout. Do I see the rest of the uh, the rest of the crew? Well, you're outside and you don't oh, have okay. X-ray vision, um, but perhaps through a window you might see them. Well, I'd assume. Yep, I'd, I'd assume that I'm looking through the window. You look through the window and see uh, Anu's light uh, lighting her face as she. Um, uh, furiously scribbles, muttering to herself as she's doing uh, some sort of research. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a reasonable place to park the Baba Yaga chicken hut. Yeah, you actually see that there is a vacant lot with a giant sign in front of it that says Baba Yaga chicken hut, and a, and a small path leading from the road and an empty space that fits perfectly where the chicken hut typically resides well i'm gonna tell i'm gonna tell the chicken hut to do what it do yes master yes, yes. And man, man, walks you, on over we got to talk about this master thing like you can you can call me gunther like yeah, I, I feel a little weird about the whole master thing gunther 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 oh man now i'm feeling weird about the gunther thing <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out oh uh, <laughs> The chicken hut stands in place and then pops its legs into itself and then pushed with a large crash uh, and dirt, you know, cloud sprouts up in every direction. The chicken hut lands in its uh, sleeping uh, quarters area. All right, rock and roll. I'm going to I'm going to go uh, gallivant with the rest of the game for a second there. It was like I have to switch my battery out. <laughs> okay. So, Gunther, you head inside uh, right, the be back. hideout. Uh, Anu, you see, um, you see one of the bells ringing, and you notice that, okay, that's the front door. Somebody's heading in. It's probably Gunther. All is well. You have, uh, you have not only your research area with the lore library, but you also have a workshop nearby. And in that workshop, there are many tools. There's a giant workshop table, a buzz saw, and other things for crafting. Uh, that's nearby, and you are planning to use that to create uh, the conditions or the special items that you need in order to pull off this stunt that you're that you're trying to make happen. Okay. Um, oh wait, did I don't remember what did Opie Opie? Did you discuss with me to keep doing the Merwin thing, or I to think I switch? might have uh, I might have talked about uh, uh, Merwin thing is very important. But uh, Gunther wants to know about mouth magic. Can you at least point me to the books for mouth magic? Like they're not like that. Not. The, not the well, I looked at the, I look at you for a second. I'm like, you know, like I know about making mouths on inanimate objects. I think is the plan. Uh, we well, are you uh, still trying? We want to be able to feed the Baba Yaga <laughs> chicken. <laughs> all okay, okay. <laughs> I think we need to. Do. That, yeah, that yeah, okay. Oh, 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 yes, yes. Uh, inanimate, uh, puppeteering, inanimate objects. Uh, uh, roll five I, uh, five B, uh, section C, up three flights. 
uh, then turn left, um, and then it should be Flight labeled green. B, section C, three flights, turn left. Uh, ask green. Beans. Beans probably knows. Beans! Woo! 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 Can you help me find mouth magic? Uh, Beans uh, ruffles his feathers for a second, and uh, not not uh, not the not the X kind of be beans, not the X kind, the green kind. The beans green kind looks of over magic. at Anu and tilts his head a little bit, and then flies off to the go. bookshelf and lands uh, somewhere nearby where you're supposed to go. I'll um, file. I'll. Waiting for you to, to join in. And eventually will lead you to uh, whatever books you're looking for. <sighs> you're looking for transmogrification magic. This would be Mouth magic. Mouth magic. Yes, that uh, transforms, uh, transmogrifies. Transmogrification. That creates the conditions you need. Uh, but you're also looking for that dark magic that Anya appears to have as well. So, yeah. Um, what you'll need... Uh, you can find, but again, it's super early in the morning. It's like 2 a.m. You're definitely going to take some harm if you don't get some sleep. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to collect a couple books. And uh, I'm going to put them in like a nice little neat stack before Gunther shows up. And then I'm going to go to bed. Gunther, magic. Uh, you and Opie have a shared room. Uh, so feel free to... Head on over if you'd like. You can sleep there for the night, Anya. Uh, Anya, you do not take any penalties for staying up all night to research. Um, uh, you won't recover any of your harm because you're busy at work, but uh, this is your uh, haven. So, um, Also, any healing magic you attempt to do while you're here, uh, not you, Anu, but anybody, um, is uh, you get a plus one uh, forward to any, any magic role used to uh, recuperate rest recover harm for me or for everybody this is for anybody who uses magic to uh use the effect okay, yeah. of recover one harm all right well in the morning once you all wake up um bright and early anu you have solved the puzzle you've cracked the code you know exactly uh what you need to do in order to bring merwin back as several tiny mini merlins in um, case we need it yeah it's like a break. Uh, uh, can I can I describe what it is? Yes, go ahead. All right. So now, in case, well, originally we're supposed to just take Merwin and little parts of it. I found out that we all just need to carry a little bit of Merwin on this bracelet, right? So, in case we ever need to resurrect, depending on how many people are in a given area, that's the size. So, Merwin could be both one third or two third Merwin or complete Merwin. Okay. Um, so, what you to... need to do in order to make this happen is called Big Magic. This is outside the purview of the Use Magic move, meaning you're going to need to do a little bit more than just make a die roll. You Ooh. need to satisfy the conditions of the Big Magic. So, there are several things you need to accomplish anytime you want to do this. Whether you want to do a little mini Merlin for yourself or anybody else does, they need to accomplish these tasks in a specific order okay step one you must be able to speak if you don't have the ability to speak or speak the incantation whopper whopper double whopper unfortunately you will not be able to make this happen now the second thing you need to break something something valuable if the item is not valued at at least 50 gold pieces it will be impossible for you to make this happen there needs to be some sacrifice and the third and final thing you you absolutely must spill blood this is blood magic that you're asking to do the unkindled is only unalive because of the use of blood magic you found that out through your research that uh merwin is inextricably tied to the underworld to the chaos demons that rule it and all of the chaos magic uh, own, uh sorry controlled by the evil uber deity asmodeus so remember one last thing speak the incantation whopper whopper double whopper second break something valued at 50 gold pieces or more and third spill blood it doesn't have to be your own and there you go uh uh i'm gonna go ahead since they're sleeping i'm gonna just do a one-third market uh merwin 
uh, and try to see if this actually works. So I get everything set up. Uh, I have, uh, I just happen because I'm right by my magical laboratory. I have a jar of like random pig's blood. Sure. Uh, and we also have uh, some, um, uh, I have this vase. I've had it for a long time. I'm sure it's worth a good amount of money. Oh, definitely. Yes, yes. So I'm going to go ahead with my only section one third of it, just as experiment. One third of Merwin. Uh, and then I go ahead. Wait. Whopper, whopper, double whopper. <laughs> you smash it. And you realize there's one part missing. The blood? Yeah. No, I, I had the blood. I oh. Just, what, yeah, did you, I got, what did you... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I, I, okay, I'm sorry. I smashed it with smashing on blood. The blood and... I put the vase... I had like a vase, put blood in it, smashed it. Oh, see, unfortunately, that's not how the ritual works. You need to spill blood. It can't be... Is uh, that spill? Yeah, that's it's a not gonna, spill. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. The magic spill. calls for blood to be drained from a living creature. Not, ah. not, a, not a sack of, uh, of, of, you know, nearby stand... Okay, you ever seen so... Morbius? You, you, seen, you seen the movie Morbius? No, no, one admits okay. that. no one admits that legally. No one admits that legally. <laughs> Okay. Well, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'll say i'll can i retcon that if i because i know the, the steps right yeah so yeah of course i and then unlike i'm not going to do this because this is a bad thing you're going to go on the back of your palm because then you can still at least do stuff all right this is exactly. how you if you do this your hand's going to be used actually not even your hand you just back right here back at this part not not at anything important there okay yes all right and I just, just a little bit of blood and as it like comes a paper out cut. You feel the pain, <laughs> and remember to do it in a very specific order. So you smash, and then you cut yourself, and then whopper, whopper, double whopper. <clears throat> the uh, small amount of Merwin's ashes that you contained in a small, in a, a tiny vial that you uh, turned into a keychain that you had pulled off and uh, left on the ground bursts open, uh, and in a very, in a large swirl of <laughs> black and gray smoke appears in its place. Merwin Burgermonger, fully nude, just completely uh, just like wet for some reason. Uh, hair is like matted down over his face and is only about two feet tall. But you've created, you've brought Merwin back. At least a <laughs> I have returned. Merwin. Yes. Uh, as part of this ritual, when you came back, you took with you one part of your psyche. One third it, of my psyche. One third, in fact, because you were split into three parts uh -huh. for this ritual. Um, so uh, go ahead and roll a three-sided die. In order to do this, you can roll a six-sided die. We can have one to two be one, uh, three to four be two, or five to six be three. That's a three. That's a three. Okay. So this is the daring, brash, bold part of your psyche. This is the part of Merwin that loves action and fire and mayhem and chaos and fun. <laughs> Alright, I uh this would be like, ha, huh, so uh hello Merwin. How do you feel? I have notes and I feel writing. Excellent. Very good. How are you uh, doing? doing good here. Have this. Uh it's not uh, I probably have to get a smaller size shirt but it'll work for now merwin begins stomping on the broken glass that was on the ground just stomping on it <laughs> <laughs> where are our friends where's the chicken hat it's 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 uh right now uh they're they're uh resting right now what time actually Why what time is so is tall it? So, uh, you know what? How do you feel? Tell me more about how you feel. What What is your motivate? Like, like, huh. what do you feel like doing right well, now? I kind of feel like smashing more things, getting into trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of want to run around and see if we can get people to yell at us and chase us and then run faster than them. Uh, all right. Well, hmm. Okay, interesting. I think what you should do, uh, Opie and Gunther are right now asleep in their room. You should surprise them. Surprise? I love surprises. I'll gladly do this. Do I All sound right, yeah. Weird? Is this no? Okay. Just don't high pitch. Just just me writing notes. Go ahead. I'm gonna just shuffles. 
You just see and... his head in the frame slowly. I'm just going to keep writing notes and follow me. Okay, so, okay. okay. So I, I am trying Is to... not self-aware that they are not the right size. Uh, High-pitched voice. Um, seems like a split of personalities. Just... Essentially, Merwin is knocking on every single door he walks past to see if they are inside there, to see if his friends Opie and Gunther are inside of those rooms. Opie and Gunther. Um... You can tell us how you wake up, but um, while you're sleeping, you hear the knocking uh, of someone small on doors uh, leading down the hallway towards your room. No. Hello? Whatever it is, no. <laughs> Whatever it is, yes! I kick open the door. Was it their door, or was I just hearing them? No, you found theirs. You found their door. Friends! <laughs> oh I my have returned! God. What the hell? Come! <laughs> Adventures! We should bite um, people! We should bite people! It's a mini whirlwind! Oh, well, yeah, I get that, but why? What do you mean, mini? I am just the same as I have always been! Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Anu was trying to work it out so like if we needed to make like an army of Merwins like, uh, at your doorway you just see a, like a side eye of Merwin just looking, in, looking and in. taking notes uh, oh. uh, so we could make more Merwins if we use less of his ashes are, are, are you saying that I am not the complete Merwin the one who I have always been You're, no. you are it Merwin it possible Existential crisis. Very it, interesting. Uh, my magic's supposed to keep it so I come together. But now I'm smaller and can think through more things. And he runs out the door. <laughs> he just runs out the door past Anu and just is gone. Mini Merwin is about two and a half feet tall. It's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> You know, um, what? Just, we're just gonna go with this. <laughs> That's just, just, just accepting it. You can kind of hear uh, pans banging, like Merwin maybe if this found his way to some kind of kitchen and just just smashing pans together. Uh, maybe people are telling him to get out, but he doesn't oh, listen. Gunther, I I got your your books on the mouth magic, uh, oh. and I was gonna give them to Anu, and then uh, you were also looking for fire magic, right? Beans. Uh yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess the case I end up hanging over a volcano again. That'd be that'd be pretty neat to have. Hey, hey beans, do you know where there are books on pyromancy? I think that's what's called, right? It's a big word. It takes a little while, but eventually, beans shows up, um, sort of just like casually strolling into the room and tilts its head to look at you. And uh, not sure, it looks confused at what you're asking. I'm looking for books on. Fire magic. Pyromancy. Beans hoots. Um, and then uh, he turns around and, and bolts out very quickly, scampering across the hallway and then this way. leaping into the air, flying down the hallway through the double doors before they close. Also, hey, Gunther, it's good to see you. Give him a tap yeah. on the shoulder. Yeah, I know it's good to see me. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's not like anything... Can keep me down. I'm uh, I'm the best at what I do, and what I do is very nice. I'm glad you both finally woke up. Just peering right behind them randomly. You are creepy sometimes. <laughs> well, but the, the experiment was a success, don't you see? I need you to promise me that you'll never experiment on me right now. Yes, I will not from this time do any more exp I mean any experiments <laughs> I, I knew I couldn't taste cinnamon <laughs> anymore for some reason why can't I taste cinnamon I do I don't know what you're talking about I gotta go did Anu remove the cinnamon gene the cinnamon tasting gene <laughs> I think so oh my gosh capable of anything this one <laughs> right. if, there was, if there was a smoke alarm it would be going off right now just so you know, because oh, of Merwin. just because of Merwin, just Merwin. If they exist, uh, your capacity for harm 
mm -hmm. uh, has decreased now to two. Ah. Uh, <laughs> um, you typically would have come back with only uh, four, with with four harm left, uh, having taken four. But right. with this cut into thirds, as you have been, you're now, you have the harm capacity for two, but you have full use of all your normal abilities. Excellent. That's excellent to know and very bad. That's a probably very bad. So yeah, um, I'm just. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna give you guys again one last hint. Merwin has set something on fire in the building. Oh, oh yes. Opie's oh, probably boy. after showing uh, uh, Gunther to the pyromancy section. I'm gonna run and, and try and find the the source of the fire and put it out. I tried to fry a, a whole library. Topic. Uh, well, that's all going down. I'm gonna go to the chicken hut, and uh, we're gonna have a heart to heart. Um, all right, I'm giving you some time to rest. I need to know what Seth's secret was. Yes, yes. Oh, the secret it was so. Oh, it's so good. Okay, yeah, I want to know it. <laughs> Master, will you give me a secret if I give it away? I'll I'll get I'll get one of I'll get like Anu or Opi to come in here and give you a secret. I'm I'm sure Anu's got tons of them. I will empty my belly of secrets for you, Master. As long as you can fill me again. I, all right, that. The, the, you you made it weird, but I'm here for it. Thank you, Master. Seth, fair. Mm -hmm. He taught me his greatest weaknesses. He lies, Master. He lies. He's where it is built on a lie. All the, the ruby minds that his parents gifted him that he built his wealth on, it's built on lies. He's inflated. He's inflated the value of all of his companies. His inventions are created on lies. Master. Oh. oh, is he a broke boy? Is he a broke boy posing as a rich boy? He's created a... Fascinating, strange, no valued, valueless currency. Self veil is a loyal master. Oh man, I, we almost got taken out by a Nepo baby. That's that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. He doesn't are. want anyone to know, Mister. He doesn't want anyone to know, especially you, especially all of you. It is his greatest weakness, Master. I need to see what we've brushed. I need to see what we figured out about mouth magic, because I think I know the spell. But you'll give it... me mouth, master. You're oh. going to give me mouth. Oh man, it, you, I gotta work on that. I gotta work on your voice, man. You creep me out, dude. <laughs> you Pick up some throat magic next. You're going to give me throat too, master? Oh, good, good! I regret this, I'm leaving. I'm my lady, but I swallow and gulp and. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, sorry. Mm, yeah, no, we'll we'll get you taken care of, man. I, mouth, throat, the whole thing. Um, I, I, you know what? If. If Opie could do it, I, I could do it too. I'm going to reach for the rock and I'm going to try. I'm going to try to ping the team. Okay, so you're going to use magic. Got it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead yeah. and just make that roll. Okay, here we go. And the effect you're trying to do is communicate with folks uh, yep. who are not in the same room as you. Yep, I'm trying to get them to all come to the chicken hut. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still laughing. Um, where is oh here it is, use magic. Oh, I lost it. Oh, one second. I'll 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 find it again. I lost it. Uh one second. I'll find I'm it fired. again. Then I missed. Here we go. I missed again. Okay. Alright, so okay. it's a success. 
I'm not finna get out magic. Not today. <laughs> but uh, chosen way. <laughs> you, uh, you can broadcast a message to your friends that they will hear. Everybody get to the chicken hut. We got news. I only heard one uh, third of that message. <laughs> chicken hut. You heard everybody get. Okay, so yeah, Anu, Opie, Merwin, you hear in your heads the voice of Gunther speaking to you, beckoning you, summoning you to the chicken hut. Uh, if it was a third of the message, it would be everybody get to. Everybody That's got the words. full message. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got the full message. All right. All right. Uh, I'll make my way over there with uh, one more experiment, just just in case. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, Opie, do you and Merwin go over to the chicken hut? Yeah, I think I've uh, I've wrangled Mini Merwin I, I, I at, like the on the pretense of a, having a shoulder ride. Yes, I was going to say definitely, definitely. I would have had to like a piggyback ride of some kind. A shoulder ride is oh, yeah. perfect. You see this little. Little furry half lion, half dog. Was it? We came up like two feet, two feet tall. About two and a half feet. Yeah. Because you said you were seven and a half feet. A third of that is two and a half feet. Exactly. Oh, perfect. That's that's. I exactly also like. Wants to be. I also like to pause the game for just a second to say that I just filled out my experience again. Oh, oh thank yeah. you very much. What's what? your improvement? Uh, Wait. Nice. Yes. Yes. What's your improvement? Uh, I will let you know in just a second. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm gonna take. You know what? I'm gonna take another spell slinger move. That's what I'm gonna do. Interesting. Okay, hold on what? one second. Let me look at that with you real fast. Now, the way the improvements oh. work, I don't think I fully explained it. You can mm -hmm. take each one of these improvements once. So you can right. take a move from another playbook. You can take a twice you could do you could do that twice um you could take a spell spell slinger move twice but um all of the advanced improvements to your ratings can only be done once each right uh, in that case i I'll also take another combat magic pick Ooh, okay excellent lots of combat magic definitely gonna be in uh coming um, in handy i took another playbook move i took oblivious to danger go on uh, as well as generally not looking out for danger, you are immune to all fear-based moves and powers. You never uh, need to act under pressure to resist fear from any source. Oh, took. okay. So you're just never afraid. Game. That's awesome. <laughs> just oblivious. I think, huh. it's all, I think it's all brand for Gopi. That fits perfectly. It, it really does. So, Opie, you and Merwin, head on over to the chicken hut. Anu, what are you doing during this time? You, um, so during this time, I guess, uh, I'm gonna get the rest of Mer- I, I don't know. If he wants to stay this way, he can, but I'm gonna get the rest, because it's not quite sun- sunrise, sun- sunrise, right? Oh, it is. Oh. Yeah, it, the morning is any time before noon. Oh, wait, so I can't try to, like, Cram, it's like, just in the morning. Uh, it has to be done in the morning. Okay. Anu, so it sounds like what you're trying to do is get Merwin back to full size. Yes. In order to do that, Merwin will have to explode himself once again, and then you can perform the ritual, which will bring we him back. We couldn't add on to him? See, the way magic works is a little bit more complicated than the uh, average layman might assume it to be. See, there's all of these different But there is potential for experimenting. If we take Merwin and let him eat the rest of himself, and then he'll expand. You know what? Merwin might be up for that, depending on if you ask him right now. He's only got one third of his brain. You can certainly try. Yes, we can try. Can we try? Yes. I feel like there's no problem in trying, right? Right? Sure. Sure. This version I'm sure it'll work out fine. No problems with that whatsoever. Sounds awesome. So on it. Are you staying or are you going to the chicken hut with them? I'm going to the chicken hut with them. Okay, so everybody, you uh, once again uh, convene inside the Baba Yaga chicken hut, which is currently uh, not using its legs to stand. It is just flat against the ground. Oh, I just walk in through the door. I don't have to... Yeah. Uh, when you come <laughs> in, you see... Um... Gunther's hands 
are covered in dark eldritch energy, I figured out what my uh my upgrade is. Uh I do necro I do uh necrotic magic now. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I read what Life Train does, and I'm like, why didn't I pick this before? Um, so uh, it's just cold and dark magic. And he goes, huh? Oh, right. Why did I have you come in here again? Secrets. That's secret. Yes. All right. So um, I should, I, I'll, I should wait till everybody gets in because I don't want to have to repeat myself. So I mean, I could always just take the kid out for a run around the around the hut. That's what? still very disconcerting to me that just so small. Hi, Gunter. Oh, boy. That's I like your dark good. half evil looking I've got... fans. Oh, thank you. Oh, am I not there yet? So cool. You're like the coolest person oh, I mean, I've ever met. You want to break here's stuff? Here's the deal. I'm like, late. He's so small, but he's he's on my shoulder, so he's actually standing about the same size as he normally does. That's... Oh, Anu! I'm, I'm assuming that you made it in. Oh, yeah, I'm in. I just appeared. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> then instead of auto, it's like ah, ah she... mm. okay. Huh. Yes. So me and the chicken hut have been talking, and uh I found out what Seth's secret is. PT dub, somebody's going to have to give the chicken hut some secrets, and I'm all out. Oh, okay, I got you. And I'll walk over to the chicken hut to the little to the horn. I'll put Mer <laughs> Mini Merwin oh. down with Anu. Sorry, me and me and the chicken hut. Thank you, Anu. Just so you know, you don't have to walk to that horn every time you want to talk to the chicken hut. You can talk to it yeah. anytime you're inside. But I mean, I love that you still do anyway. I'm sure the chicken hut appreciates it. Oh, yeah. It's like it, its uh, mouth, it, kind of. It, it's its ear, technically. That's where we'll put the mouth. <laughs> oh no! Oh, gosh. So you whisper into its into its mouth. You it's put your mouth, mouth ear. Close to its mouth ear. Well, it, 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 my chicken hut eats secrets, so technically we're feeding him if it, that's the mouth. Exactly. It does both. We're feeding it. It does both, okay? Yeah. All right. I'll just sort of uh, I'll go to the chicken hut and be like, Someone told me the prophecy was a lie, and I'm not sure anymore of myself. That's the the entire the hut head. begins to shake and convulse, and you hear the most disturbing sounds you've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> disturbing sounds you've ever heard the chicken hut make. The rest of you, Anu, Gunther, and Merwin, you you know that Opie went over to go talk to the chicken hut, but you've never seen the chicken hut react like this uh you are actually a little like slightly concerned stuff is falling out of cabinets and the fridge actually just like topples over and like one of the windows just like shatters uh and and the chicken hut just says monster, 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 thank you. <laughs> hey yo fam did the chicken hut just bust <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, I have a joke that's not safe for stream, but I'm not going to say it. Hold on, we're we'll going to get to our starting soon, and we'll get we'll t tell us, then we'll go back. <laughs> the chicken hut has uh, been uh, completely uh, full, uh, filled to the brim. Uh, is tank tank is all good. Uh, any more secrets, and it'll it'll probably definitely just like hurt at that point. That's called overeating. Uh, but the chicken hut is very satisfied now. No more secrets on Tinder. <laughs> so much. I kind of want to tell it a secret now. <laughs> um, right. <clears throat> anyway, so I got Seth's secret. Seth, surprise, is a broke boy. Uh, Seth, Seth, oh. uh, billionaire. I thought he was really rich. Yeah, Seth Bale? Nah. broke. Red mm. boy, so, of lies. Yeah, it does. It does well. Anybody to know, right? Mm. And uh, you know, the chicken hut would probably tell it better. So if y'all want to get more of the deets on that, just ask the chicken hut. But here's the other thing. Um, I have been to Seth's 
layer, right? Uh, and you all know my deal, right? If I've been to a place, I could go back to a place. That's kind of, you know. Yeah, it's a, whole, it's a whole thing. Got it. Yeah. So whenever we're ready to, you know, scrap. We just zip zaps up. We're there. Kind of. I can only take one person at a time. Oh, yeah. Um, I might be able to make a portal. It'll be stressful. It's a whole thing. Uh, and the other problem is I was technically in the chicken hut over the lava. So if it does work, oh. we might be over the lava. lava. So, yeah. Um, That's a problem. Yeah, I mean, I could get myself out of that situation if it happens, but whoever is coming with me, Ooh. uh, well, they they better you know figure it out. I can test it. I like fire and dying. I've done it a bunch. Oh, but then we wouldn't be able to recover your ashes, bud. What are the, are those? What make me me? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> and lava doesn't make ashes, huh? No. Well, I would have to go get the ash. From oh, the crazy. lava. Well, uh, see, the you're thing the is... person I know. Of course you could do it. Uh, oh, ooh, I appreciate that, but, but the way my skin works with lava... Ugh. Is it doesn't, generally. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I might be able to. I'm pretty tough, but... I don't know uh, if you're lava tough, though. I don't Technically know speaking, tough. us, as uh, we're, we're walking water bags, so it doesn't really take that much temperature to actually just not make you... You, you might actually turn into glass. Oh, why do you know that? I want to be glass. I want to be glass. You can actually do a lot with uh, human ashes. Did you know that? There's lots of things. I've researched this. You never cease to creep me right out. <laughs> Anna told me that, like, sometimes if you put, like, because, like, people, like, at their very base component are carbon, so you can actually compress them into diamonds. Mm -hmm. You make people diamonds. Wait, am I smaller That's a science than I used fact. to be? That I'm me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so you'll uh, put Merwin back on their shoulders. See? Now you're all better. Just kicking his legs like a little kid. Yeah. So, Anu, uh, mm -hmm. something happens to you, you don't really know how to explain to other people. You just have this, this sense that you've always had. Someone's knocking on the door of your haven. This is your, you know, your domain. Maybe it's your instincts kick kicking in. You don't know exactly what it is, but you know that somebody's knocking on that door. You're not in the side right now. You can't actually hear it, but you know. Mm. Hold on a moment, folks. I'll be right back. There's something happening, and I'll just kind of, like, look, peek out the chicken hat, because it's, like, right next to it, right? You peek out the window, and you see a giant gazebo, one that you recognize. Um, no one inside it. However, there is somebody, a woman, knocking furiously on the front door of your hideout. Hold on, folks. I'll, I'll be right back. Somebody's here at the door. Say hi for me. I will do my customary while they're banging on the door. Do you need something as I appear behind them? Please, <laughs> no. Uh, it is me, Kelly. The Destiny Servants? You remember? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, hello, how are you doing? Okay. Please, Anu. We are... It is not good. This is not good at all. Seth Vale, he has taken her. He has taken Michelle. Oh, and then I look to see if there's, like, there's one less of the trio, apparently. Yes. Yeah, there's only two of them. <laughs> Oh, it's oh, just oh. Kelly and Michelle. Yeah, Kelly and Michelle. Yeah. Right. The third one went off to do her own thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so they're no longer true. She went, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take the last one. All right. Here, here, here. Come. The rest of the team is over here. We'll get you some food. Um, I don't need any food. Old... No, I don't. I, I, we need to go now to Valley 14. Well, the Palace of Pain. She is being held there. All right. Well, let me go ahead and. Get the rest of the team. We we can't just you know. Come on, come on, and we'll. I'll take her to the chicken hut then. Okay, okay. We must leave and at then, once. She is in great danger. 
Uh, I'll just go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'll, all right, just uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll go ahead and open litter into the chicken hut and, uh, wait, which one is this one? Kelly? Yeah, Kelly, Kelly has something to say. Uh, hey, Kelly. Miss Opie, please, you all must come quickly to the palace of Ping. That's well has taken hostage of Michelle. Michelle is captured. I fear she must, she must be tortured or something bad is going to happen to her. Oh no! Uh, Seth Vale That's is the sucks. guy. Yes, he is. Yeah. the he is the one we has been searching for for a very long time. Broke boy. Broke boy. Broke. Yeah. Boy. yeah he we broke. found a, a secret. He broke. Uh. Oh. Okay. Secret shame. Uh. Anyways. Um. Well, we'll stop. By uh, well, we're gonna have to go to Valley Fourteen. Okay, let's go. Uh, hey, Chicken Hut. Yes. Can, can you take us? Can you take us but again, Opie? It's really weird. I'm white. Okay, Master. <laughs> I will call you Opie. 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 Thank you. Opie. It's just really racially charged. <laughs> Opie. Thank you. I uh, will take you. Valley 14, please. To... Valley 14! I will go right now! <laughs> he stands up and you see the little speed of Gonzalez's feet as it speeds out of the town of Wind. Supercharged! Okay, so, yeah. Um, all of you are uh, rushing towards Valley 14 across the land. It does take you uh, the better part of the day. You arrive in the dead of night. It is 9pm. The sun has set and there is a gloomy dark cloud hovering over this massive walled town you can see strange flying creatures um, hovering and flying above the large city the city guards themselves are decked out with massive wooden and it appears to be actually sort of like glistening bluish metal armor and each of them uh, holds their giant halberds in crossing them over one another, barring you from entering with the, the chicken hut. You shall not pass here without permission from Seth Vale. Your large building, and it raises one hand very robotically towards all of you, must remain outside the city hall. What if we just push them down? Hey, Chicken Hat, how'd you get in last time? Seth, he brought me inside. He told he told them to let me in. Hmm. Hey, this is Seth's friend you're talking to. This is Seth's yes. friend you're talking to. Do you want to get in trouble? Do you want to get reprogrammed? Sounds wanna... like you're trying to manipulate someone. Listen, I'll tell you, I can't, I, I cannot speak to the, I don't control the one third of the brain of Merwin. So I, I like, <laughs> I, I control the whole brain, not the one third. Go ahead and make a roll to manipulate someone using oh. your charm. Okay. Uh, so you've given them a reason. Their reason is they'll get in trouble mm -hmm. if they don't do what you they'll say. They get reprogrammed. Ooh, even worse. Uh, that's, uh, that's not great. Someone like can students. help out with a plus one. I'd like to help. If you're yeah. successful, you add a plus one. I'm here because Seth invited me and the chicken hut goes where I go. Yeah. I'm going to roll with cool to help out. Yeah, go for it. Ooh, excellent. Oh, advanced yeah, success. You're... Yeah, you're going to grant a plus one, making that six a seven, and thereby a mixed success to manipulate My someone. kind of success. So what that means is uh, they'll do what you say, but only if you do something for them right now. And that has to show that you mean what you say will actually come true. Okay. What you need? And even if, it, and if they don't, if they if they don't like get on your side immediately, what you can do is they will tell you how to get them to do what you want them to. Okay. I, uh, what's it gonna take to get us through these gates with Chicken Hut? <gasps> Robots. They look at each other and then <gasps> look back at you 
and they say, you must get permission or you will not enter. Oh, we have permission. It's not my fault they didn't tell you. Can you provide evidence? Yeah. I walked in like this and I talked to Seth because he needs he needs something. And he said, hey. let them all in. And he said, there hey, won't be a problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. not compute That's as not can I use, evidence. Can I use uh, preparedness uh, to have a written note from Seth that he totally is letting us in? Hey, you definitely knew you were coming here, and you knew you're going to have to get inside. So, yeah, absolutely, roll for it. And there's just just to, well while well, she's rolling, uh, while Anna's rolling, uh, where so they're like on the are they like on a bridge? Are they on the edge of a door? Is there like a thing that I can push them down that they could fall into? Yeah, they are on the edge of a bridge. Yeah, okay, tight, tight, good to know. Uh, it was a mixed success. I mean, I could make it a a definite success if I use my luck. Correct. That's correct. I will make it a definite success uh, nice. for that. And okay. I, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you use a point of luck. You uh, get an automatic 12 on that roll. And you have exactly what you needed right now, right here. And you discover that something that's going on is related to something you were involved in years ago. You recall the magic mouth spell that you are trying to cast on the uh, a permanent magic mouth spell uh, that you're trying to cast on the chicken hut and part of the big magic that you would need to conduct uh, involves three huge things that you need to accomplish in this order you'll need to collect a child's laughter an adult's gasp and an a, a, a senior's or an elder's sigh after collecting these things, you can continue. You can actually perform the ritual needed to create this uh, this spell. And you remember once again. You think back to all of the children that you doomed as you uh, left them in their uh, ex uh, in their cages after running that experiment you didn't want to do all those years ago. Ah, the flashback. It, it, it's just ah. And then the folks who are uh, the, the the guards, they see you uh, malfunctioning as, as it appears to them. And uh, they they um, turn to battle positions and now uh, they attack you. Um, I don't like what? that. I, I thought Anu was trying to show a, a handwritten permission slip from Seth Vale to the statues. That is exactly what you thought was happen, and it is what you're trying to make happen, and something else happened instead. Oh, they uh, they, 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 uh, they charge towards you uh, with their I'm uh, sorry, their I didn't mean to. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Oh. I'm, yeah, uh, Guff has just been waiting in the wings to just Toss a nuke out, essentially. <laughs> so go, oh, bud. Uh, the second I see them starting to get hostile with my buddies, uh, I would like to use magic. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, this is the thing. If you ever encounter guards that are hostile, just sneak up behind them and push them off the bridge. It works almost every time. It works 100% of the time, 60% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> this needs magic. Yeah! Let's see it. What are you trying to do? <laughs> um, nothing, apparently. You know what? I'm gonna use a look. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> this is so okay. bad. This is the time to use it. Yep. So you use a bit of luck to turn that five into a twelve, giving yep. you a, uh, a perfect success on your use magic in an attempt to do something that you haven't explained yet. What are you trying to do? I am going to um, uh, when I use magic to inflict harm, I can choose to inflict three harm uh, area magic in obvious. Or uh, three harm, ignore armor, magic, and obvious. I'm going to make it uh, the area. And it's also going to be necromatic, which means that I add. Uh, 
Mm. Yeah, it's going to be necromatic. So I add life drain. Oh. Uh, what life drain says is whatever harm I deal, I get back as life. Wow. It's so. Uh, Gunther, the uh, 15th level wizard, has just joined <laughs> the party of 5th level hunters. <laughs> Go for it. You uh, um, you you hurl a, a what? You're not using ice magic anymore? Uh, no, this is necrotic. So uh, his hand's just gonna... It looks like his hand's on fire, but the fire is black. And he's just going to fling it uh, at them. And then a pillar of black flames is gonna uh, appear above both of them and slam down on them. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, you need to draw blood. In order to cast this magic using the luck that you used, the mm -hmm. blood magic that's going to alert the uh, <laughs> Hunter's Guild once again to your to your illicit activities. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble for that one. This I'm... massive ball of necrotic energy undulating Whirring in the air, a swirl of this black cloud, this black mist that swirls around it, carries this massive trail, this black ooze uh, of smoke through the air as the robotic guards charge towards you and are demolished in an explosion of energy that sends metallic parts, shards flying in all directions, leaving nothing in their wake. A huge scorched, um, earth uh the mat the 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 wooden tiles of the bridge now being uh sundered and and melted from the energy this black ooze left behind it is all that remains everyone in the area has heard this again it's only 9 p.m people are starting to uh come out of their homes uh the flying creatures that you saw above the city um they go into a frenzy. You can see their red eyes. They don't appear to have uh, any direction or, or goal, but they are flying even faster now. You're not sure how they operate, but some commotion is going on inside the city. But for now, you have, you have removed this, these, this obstacle, these people. So I don't want to criticize how we're doing things, y'all, but I'm thinking like just, Kick the door down, kill everything inside kind of tactic. I like it. Let's do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> yes, I like I like this, but also uh, because cause we know something, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, can we say on the way here, I print out a, a lot of pamphlets. You have a printer. Yeah. A printer. Yeah, you have to print the coupon somehow. Yeah. How did the coupons, coupons get me? Flyers? It's all part of merchandising in this okay, chicken I'm, hut. I'm in charge of replacing the ink. Hi, I'm the printer. <laughs> Just cast it all day. I hate this job. The ink is liquor. <laughs> yeah, so you got this like giant printer. And you just like hit a, bu a bunch of buttons on it. Boop, 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 and then it just like prints out whatever you want. So like, what do you want to print? Oh, uh, we're going to just go ahead and put on blast while we're running through Seth's town. Uh, that actually someone needs to check his bookings, and he doesn't have, he can't pay anybody. He can't pay anybody. He's a fraud. Got it. Okay, yes. So, uh, you make a bunch of flyers, uh, that alert people to, uh, Seth Vale. It's like propaganda, um, about how pe Seth Vale is actually lying to them. And his uh, his uh, cryptocurrency scheme is actually just a Ponzi scheme. It's a pyramid scheme, and it's all kinds of grift. And it's just trying to get people to sign up to use the money that he has, and he's trying to spread that across the world. And it's just it's just fake. You're doing all of that on a poster, and so you go through town, pinning those to like no, know, not pinning them. We're just and... throwing them because we got to oh. run in and kick butt. That's it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so you're just throwing uh, these pamphlets uh, everywhere. People uh, have come out of their homes to see what's what's going on. They're not sure what's happening, but they are picking them up and they're reading them. And people are confused. They're not sure what's going on. Uh, but yeah, so on your way to the Palace of Pain, you are just littering. <laughs> yes. 
several guards attempt to stop you on your uh, path uh, of destruction and mayhem. How does that work out? <laughs> that, <laughs> that's a good question. We we definitely will figure that out. Uh, <laughs> several guards, much like the ones you saw, um, are approaching you from different directions, only a couple of them at a time. You also see these giant birds in the sky. They appear to be metallic in nature. They've got glowing red eyes, but they don't appear to be living. They appear to be operated um, by some mechanics that you're not uh, sure of. But running through this town, uh, we're no longer in Winter Bay. Instead, we are in Valley 14. You can actually see that there are small hills where houses and buildings are perched. Massive buildings that appear to be more like factories, more um, more blocky and square and cubed rather than uh, with any large like thatched roofs or uh, other things that would make it a little bit more uh, cozy to look at. Instead, there's these cold, unfeeling uh, buildings that, that are more un- uh, unappealing to the eye, but appear to be more functional for whoever built them. So the town is pretty big, but you know where to go. You've always known where Seth Vale has been hiding, but now you finally know his weakness. And now that Anu is beginning to act on it, you will actually have a chance at defeating him. Um, hopefully, the work that Anu is doing is actually going to is is actually going to help you. But guards are approaching. Uh, there are attack drones in the air. What do y'all want to do? Uh, Opie's going to oh. have the big sword and start running in. Uh, Gunther, sorry. It's oh no, you're good. I was, I was going to take Opie, but now I think I'm going to no. take. Uh, now I think I'm going to take. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mer- Marcus, you, yeah, Mervin, you, you ready to? You ready to? particularly if, die if you were to put me on your shoulders in any capacity i would stand on lay on your shoulders with my hands lighting up in flames ready to go okay uh ah. gm i would like to use my angel wings to go to the red button excellent uh i do have to roll a weird because i'm taking somebody with me <laughs> yeah uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that uh here we go Plus one yeah. so getting smaller. That's a 13. Oh my god. Nice. So that means that we get there. Um no issue according to the playbook. I you let That's me correct. know what happens. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so um we're at this red button, and I'm gonna go, buddy, you wanna do the honors? Yeah. He smashes <laughs> it. Okay. Just a out of character question. Yeah. Uh-huh. What do you, just just for my own peace of mind? What do you expect to happen when you press the button? It's a red button, man. You gotta press the red button. Yeah. <laughs> I have no expectations other than he's got a red button, Real- and I want to press it. Realistically, honestly, if Merwin were full size, he would still be very interested in pressing that button. Okay, got it. All right. <laughs> um. So. A cocoon of ice shrouds Gunther and Merwin. You appear unfurling these uh, massive ice wings and you drop down onto the ground of a tiled floor, a blank room. There are no windows. The walls are pure white. The ceiling matches the floor. Tiles is a very uncomfortable space. When you look around, this place feels huge. As you make steps towards one of the walls, you find it's impossible to actually make it there. You don't make any distance between you and the button. You stand there, Gunther and Merwin, at this giant red button. And as a voice begins to speak to you uh, from seemingly nowhere, you press the button before it has a chance to finish what it was saying to you. Hello. It probably won't come up. Before you is a button. Should you press... <laughs> <laughs> yeah! And this is yeah! why you bring ching, ching, ching. back your whole friend next time. Ching, 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 ching,
all of the uh, tiles of the floor begin to flip and rotate, uh, and it turns into a different sort of room. The button recedes down into the flooring, and you watch as Merwin just explodes. <laughs> this massive explosion of fire, a massive fireball in all directions. Merwin, your ashes are sent flying in every direction. Gunther, you are covered head to toe in Merwin's uh, <laughs> remains. It gets in every groove of your clothing into your socks. Uh, into I can do that. <laughs> your sacrifice, a worthy one, you may enter. And you see now the massive black obsidian metal doors with two large round handles opens just slightly, just enough for you, Gunther. Meanwhile, Opie, you and Anu arrive at the Palace of Pain, being chased by the guards. You find yourself at the front doors, and the guards, something calls them off. Something tells them to stop. Something tells them that you are meant to be here, and they stop, forming a large ring around you and the palace. Their halberds, their shields, the birds perched um, nearby to keep you from going anywhere else. Not that you, I mean, this is where you wanted to be. <laughs> so there you stand. I told the, you we had permission. There you stand <laughs> at the Palace of Pain. Um, the Chicken Hut and Kelly left um, up on the outskirts. Just the two of you here at the giant doors that open for you, menacingly. A dark room ahead of you, unable to see what lies beyond. You feel almost like this, uh, this magnetic force. It's not very strong, but you can feel it compelling you. This is destiny pulling you into the Palace of Pain. And we... We'll see what happens next. Oh my gosh! On our ne on our next and final episode Woo! of the Palace Woo! of Pain, <laughs> everyone. I have been your keeper. Thank you so much for playing with us today. We are going to go on a break. It'll be a couple of weeks before we have the grand finale of the showdown at the Palace of Pain and the conclusion of this campaign for Monster of the Week, and we will. We will kick off uh, Table Takes Plays with the finale. So I hope you're all excited for that. I su I definitely am. I hope you all have a great Gen Con, but don't go anywhere. We have Sarah's Table coming up right after this. So stick around. Thank you all so much for playing, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.